listening, you know, and um, right. I know the question I would have asked is um, how how would you be able to to you know uh, do that which you know that will prevent uh, one having to be practicing uh, uh, witchcraft, you know, towards the children, if I have to put it that way, um, because most times a whole lot of things happen where the parents feel that uh, they're actually helping the children and being overly protective at the end of the day you know it, it turns out to be bad I, I grew up where we are left to do what we need to do but we are told that this is what is right and it's up to us to choose what is wrong and right you know of honor of our own accord but some other people would never had that kind of uh, privilege so today, with a whole lot of things happening in the world, exposure to uh, social media, uh, ritualists on the pros, and a whole lot of things, you know, parents will still not be able to, today, I mean, growing up, when I was of my son's age, I could, I could go out of my house on my, when I was like five years old, up to two miles, you know, so how would the modern parents in this age and time with the evil everywhere, you know, ensure that they don't uh, commit witchcraft in training their kids and be able to still guide them? So that's my question. Well, the answer is in the last thing you said, is the word guide. You know, I'll give you my example. You know, I, I grew up with my mom. My mom is a very strong willed person. Right, and a strong-willed person killed my own will. So I grew up immature because my mom felt she could make all the decisions for me, right? And I know exactly the day my will died. You know, it was one day um, I'd gone to her office, her boss had asked me a question, which I did very well, and he gave me money, right, because he was impressed. And in my mind, I had plans for that money. In my mother's mind, she had plans for that money. <laughs> you know, and I saw no reason why she should be planning for my money. <laughs> you know, and I, I stated that, you know, but my mom was all about what she wanted to do with the money. She was going to use it for me, well, not for herself, but she had, she wanted to buy something for me with the money. That wasn't my plan. And I pretty much argued with her, but she won. But that day, my will died. My ability to make decisions of myself died practically on that day, you see? And that does not help me. You see, that helped her, she won. She conquered me as it were, right? But that conquering affected every other thing in my life after that, because I wasn't confident in making decisions, right? And that's what you want, to, you want to teach your children, the ability to make decisions, right? It's not about whether you win or not win. It's not about what the money is used for. But you want to teach them the ability to make decisions because they're going to make decisions in life which will determine their destiny. And will be at a time when you will not be there. So you want to teach them when you are there how to make decisions because that is what will make or mar their life, right? Now, that's the greatest power that God has given to human beings, which is above every other power you can think of, is the willpower. And that is what you want to develop in your children. You want to guide them, not necessarily direct them. Because so as long as you are directing them, they are not using their own willpower. They are not using their own intellect. They are not using their own ability to reason. They are not learning to make decisions. So you don't want to be making all the decisions for them, but you want, to be, you want them to make mistakes while they are under you. And this will be different for different parents, different kids, depending on the environment you find yourself, right? So you don't have to compare yourself to other people. You have to then do it for your children according to the environment you find yourself. Like you said, you know, when I was growing up, I did a lot of do independent things. My parents are gone all day. I go play football. You know, I I I, I did taking my junior ones to uh, 
childcare and all of that. We did a whole lot of things that my own children could not do at the same age because they're all counted, right? On like when I was growing up, I would live in a face you, I face me, I face you. And I didn't have a choice but to live in community. I here growing up, we live in a duplex, whole house, you know, they're all counting. They don't have that same opportunity. But that is no excuse, right? I still have to find a way within that limitation to teach them the ability to make decisions, right? So I have to, um, I'm, try, I'm trying to look for an example. You know, the other day I, I shared this one when my daughter was 18 years old, my last daughter, you know, I, 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 I got into, I already arranged for her as to the, the medical arrangement for her, you know, how she was going. At that, so at that time, we did, she didn't have an insurance card by the time I was leaving her in the US, right? Uh, so I'd already arranged how she was going to go to the clinic, where she was going to go, how much she was going to pay, right? But after that, she got an insurance card and she was able to make an arrangement where she was able to get something better, cheaper, right? But when I came in, she was on the phone talking to the bank. And I just stepped in, she was talking, I just took the phone from her because my assumption was that whatever she was discussing with the bank, she wasn't doing it well, but I could do it better, right? And I jumped into the middle of what she was discussing. And I made a, the decision I made then was someone did achieve as much as she would have. But the key thing from that incident actually was the fact that I was telling her that she wasn't qualified, that she wasn't enough. I wasn't trusting her. Yes, she was doing that when I wasn't around. When I was around, I was pretty much taking over the situation, right? So from that, I did apologize to her after that, you know? But I, from that day, I, I gave her more leverage, more, 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 more freedom. And all three of, of them are doing very well as younger adults, right? As they give them that, that freedom. They're gonna make their mistakes, right? but they know that they can easily come to me when they make their mistakes, right? So I don't know if I answered your question. Do you understand all I said, Chidi? Thank, thank you for preaching to the choir, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but is it in line with the question what you were saying? Oh, no, it is, it is, you know, no, the reason why I ask that, I, I know and I have my strategy, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of person that allow people, I, I wouldn't do what oh, you well, did man. anyway, but that's by the way. So I allow people to have their way and when they make mistakes, for instance, it's just like what we see even at the workplace where people will not trust you. I trust you at the beginning so that you're the one not to let me know that you can't be trusted. You know, those kind of things, you know, gotcha. I, I believe you can do it. So until now, you now show me that you can't do it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there are really lessons every day. The good thing that you learn the lesson and you know, if you had had another child or like you're not talking to us, you are giving us tidbits on what is right and how best to do it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And any, anything to add before I shoot on? Um, well, you said the right thing. I mean, um, I, one thing I know for sure, one thing I know is that um, um, as Nigerians, we're very, we're very, very helicopter parents. And um, it's a mindset that we need to change we need, in this society. We need to, um, at a certain age, guide our kids. That's the right word, guide them. Because we want to parent. We want to parent the way our parents parented us but um, it's not gonna work because um, we're in different seasons and, the, and there are different challenges that we are, are, are working through at this time compared to what our parents did walk through. So I feel like um, at a certain age, like for instance, your kids are um, like adults now. And um, I remember when um, your, your kids were little, because I know, I know we've gone to, um, we've worked, I mean, I've known you guys, I mean, you've known me all my life, almost all my That'd life. Be, yeah, so. Right, but, um, you know, and I remember how and, um, your wife used to be so worried about the girls. Oh, they don't listen, they don't listen. And I will tell her that, you know, just, they're going to they're gonna be okay. 
just just believe that whatever you're saying to them, that they are listening, that that kids are like that. They you pretend like they don't listen, but they do listen. And the reason why I found that out was living with my uncle in Nigeria because he's a Nigerian and his wife is an American. So yeah. is to see the is to see the comp- comparison of how they raise their kids, right? So, and I learned then that, that I took some of the things from Nigeria and some of the things from here, and you have to merge them together with what works for your family. Yeah. And I am so proud of your girls. I am so proud of them. And whenever I, I talk to an, uh, your wife, I say, did I not tell you that these kids are going to be okay? And I am just so proud of them because neither parents are here and they're doing extremely awesomely well. And I am just so proud of them. So you are so right in that it comes to a place where we need to back up and just and just guide them and guide them. And they're gonna and and they let them make the mistake while they are living with us because a lot of kids make the mistakes while they're out because we don't give them the leverage to make the mistakes while they are living with us. Amen. Amen. 